TNTM The Show presents Talking Nerdy, June edition, with your hosts Pablo Gunner, Marvin Goof, The Ambassador, and we are here to talk nerdy to you about House of the Dragon. House of the Dragon Season 2, I think there's only been one episode out, right? Yeah, have you watched the first season? I did not watch the first season. My wife's like, we have to watch the first season. I was like, wife, the first season, the first episode of the second season is coming out. I don't have time for that. And I want to see the strength of the first episode of the second season without having to watch it and see, as a as someone just jumping in, how it does. And she's like, you're going to be lost. It's, it's, you're going to hate it. And, and I'm like, well, I'm probably going to hate it anyway just because I hated the ending to Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. So I, I was very guarded coming in. I was like, I was like, F this. And there was a lot of it too that just felt like they were kind of just going through the motions of Game of Thrones. Like, they were just delivering their lines and they felt like they were just bland and, and like the costumes. I won't say they look cheap, it looks expensive, but it just didn't, I don't know, there's just something about it that it didn't feel like it was capturing the same magic that the early Game of Thrones seasons did, or even early Game of Thrones, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, but then it shifted. There's a point where that shifted there was characters they brought the emotion that weren't they weren't before or just actors that were different actors were showing up and they were bringing the emotion i was like it sucked me in really quick like yeah it was like it wasn't until like maybe halfway or more than halfway through but it sucked me in and i was like oh okay this is i still didn't know who we're supposed to be rooting for per se i feel like there was a leaning but it, it was like, but it was tough because even on the side of the people you think you're supposed to be rooting for, there's people on that side where you go like, this is not, you don't have good people on your side. Like, mm -hmm. Damon's not a good dude. I don't understand this love with, for, with, for bad dudes. I, once, <laughs> I, maybe it's just a stupid woman thing. Like, I gotta love the bad dude and make him good. I don't know what it is. Like, you, you realize who her husband is, right? Damon, who he is to her, right? I know. I, well, that's her uncle. That's her, right, which makes it worse, and it makes me more confused that I'm seeing women on TikTok being like, I love him, and I'm all for this. And I'm like, maybe you live in the South. I don't know. Um, uh, so, because I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Because it's not just like one person. There's a lot of women that are like, I'm all for this, and I'm all for him. And I'm like, he's not a good dude. And I hated the king, whoever, like, the, the king... Uh, you know, I don't even remember his name because they all sound... At this point, they all sound the name. They're all Eris and Agon, and they're all... To me, the, that's another thing that I go, like, I'm over the Game of Thrones stuff where it's like, where they have to, like, oh, I'm introducing them every time they come into the room, and I have to... They are the 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 Andals of this, and, the, and I'm like, shut up. I don't want to hear that. Get on with the story. You know, this helps nothing. This I, I've heard this spiel before. Shut up. Move on. Like, it was those uh, things that annoyed me. I know that's part that in, of it, but... They did that in King's Landing a lot the first season. Right. And so we know. We know it. You don't need to keep doing it. You don't need to keep on... Especially if you're trying to separate yourself. Like, let's move on from that. But it's the same you know? rules of society. So... You gotta follow those rules of formality. Right. And, well, I mean, stuff can happen off screen. You, you can say, like, oh, and just start... I mean, lots of times scenes just pick up. We're, we're already past that. You know what I mean? Like, it's like you don't show people just like, oh, well, this is... I mean, there's a lot of stuff they do. Like, even my cousin explained to me the whole... Why the whole Red Wedding was so messed up is because in that world, when you feed somebody in your home, it is an absolute, like, they're your family. You know? Like, it is like you... It's the, the once again, that thing. So when they did that, they or broke it. Did they explain you, that? You no, they didn't the go into as it. Well. You didn't really go, you didn't go into that. The hound didn't like the people he was staying with, with, mm. the, with the girl. I can't remember her name anymore. The youngest daughter. I barely watched season one. But basically, girl, so. <laughs> when he was invited by like a simple, like a farmer to eat, mm -hmm. even though he, you could tell he wasn't really liking the farmer, he was just like holding back like crazy and just being very, very respectful. And when you hear that line, when you hear about that, it makes sense why the hound is doing what he's doing. Because that's just what you do if you're a guest. You, you appreciate the host mm -hmm. for what they're doing for you. Right. And you try not 
it's your duty to not get them uncomfortable if they're doing that favor for you. But getting back to it, I, I ended up getting sucked in by the end. I'm willing to give it a chance. I'm willing to continue watching. I feel because as a person who was guarded and not even so much guarded as just like anti-got, that you did enough to make me go, okay, I'll watch your next episode. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, this, this wasn't a bad episode. I won't say it was the best. But, and I could be nitpicky because there were things like her coming off the dragon where you could tell like there's ridges in the dragon's wing. She didn't ridge slide down. She slid down like she was coming off a slide you know, or something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I could be nitpicky and that is nitpicky. You know, there are things that I can go like, oh, well, this looked cheap and, and I don't like this. Yeah, that's nitpicky stuff. You know what I mean? But overall, I can say like it was a pretty solid episode that it's at least worth checking out at the least, you know, at the least. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we can just talk about, you know, all this stuff with the character. Yeah, and I love talking about this with stuff. my wife. I was like, oh, what, what's up with this and what's up with that? So it was great, like, conversating people with. Like, I missed that about Game of Thrones is just the weekly goop memes mm -hmm. and the talking to people and all that. That's, I missed that. So it was nice to have that back as well. Yeah, I think it's worth watching, but I, I feel House of Dragon is general... It does well in some places, and other places it's just lazy and sloppy. Mm -hmm. Like the first season, their whole setup for the premise for the Civil War we're getting ready to see was lazy and sloppy. The Civil War happened because there's a delirious old man who mistook who he was talking to. That's the premise of the whole Civil War that you see breaking out right now. Mm -hmm. Is a delirious old man. Yeah, I mean, even the king... The king, the, the other king, I don't know, the usurper king or whatever, whoever's, because it's actually supposed to be Rhaenerys that she's supposed to be well, taking over, right? yes and no. So... So it depends on what you believe. So Rhaener so the previous king, her Rhaenerys' father, said that she would be his heir and never changed that. But the way the royalty line goes is... She would be there if he didn't have any more kids after that. But he marries Rhaenerys' close friend and has kids with her. Yeah, his daughter's age. <laughs> it's not yeah. unheard of. She makes sense to be the one to take over because she has all the knowledge. In order for Game of Thrones to happen, she needs to take over. Or the knowledge that really bring, starts moving the show forward doesn't exist. Because basically, the only time he really shares a prophecy that's passed down through kings and queens is with Rhaenerys when she's younger. The prophecy of the one that's going to unite everyone. Which uh, was supposed to be Jon Snow, but you saw how that worked out. Yeah. So, and that's another thing is, it's like, I know what the end game is, so I'm not that invested. But I was saying the, the Usurper King... He seemed like a jerk at the council meeting, but then he was really good with the with the common folk. And so it was con it was conflicting to me because I was like, oh, he's a jerk off. And then he's good with the people. And I'm like, so is he or is he not a jerk off? Well then? You know what I mean? Like Well, he just doesn't he doesn't care. He really just doesn't care about what they're saying. He just wants to get them out of the room. So he's willing to just say, yeah, you can have your sheep. Go ahead. Well, it didn't seem that way, though. It seemed like he was doing what's right and saying what's fair. But then it was his his hand that was like, no, we can't do that. Like, it, everything he said, like, yeah, 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 you can do that. You can have your stuff. Yeah, I mean, it did seem like he's trying to keep the peace and he doesn't he doesn't really want to hear their complaints. And he's like, he is trying to get them to go away. But it did seem like he cared and he was... Like, he was good with them, and then it was the hand that was, like, putting a kibosh yeah, on all grandpa. that. So, yeah, which, I mean, I did recognize him. That's the lizard from uh, Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, what did we say? It was it's, it's worth checking out? Yeah, it's worth checking it's out. It's worth checking out. Let's talk about our merch. Let's talk about our merch. I'm sporting uh, our Star Wars stuff, the Star Wars Talk Nerdy to Me, just plain. And then I got the shorts, Talk Nerdy to Me. You can get that on our website. It's on sale with free shipping. Probably going to continue to be because of the fact that Acolyte is continuing into the next month. A lot of this stuff is like prototype stuff, so it's upgraded, there's better versions on our actual website. And hey, if there's anything that you want customized to you, or you there anything you have any idea, just send it to us, and we'll do our best to do that and see what we can get away with. 
because there's some stuff we can't, some stuff we can't. <laughs> you know, we yeah, push yeah. the boundaries as much as we can. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I got my uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Talk Nerdy to Me shirt. shirt. Pretty awesome. I got the Halo web. The good Halo. Ooh, yeah. Yes. I like it. So, yeah. Uh, and if you want any of this stuff, just request it. If it's not on the website, just hit us up, and, and we'll make it available to you and, and hook you up. Cool? So, for shout-outs, we really don't have much. Uh... <laughs> because, um, well, I mean, all, MK Jekyll and Hyde is now at the top of that list because they're phenomenal. They reached 250 subs on their for their comics, for their online comics, and, and they're really cool and really awesome, and they do great stuff. I know they're a, a parent as well, and so it's, it's great conversing with them, and just all their posts are great. The Pesky Gremlins, they have a new website, and they have, like, new comics, web comics out, too, that look fun and enjoyable. And, and they always help out with their stuff. Eric Lopez, that guy's always a G. Like, he's the best on, on Twitter mm -hmm. and retweeting our stuff, as well as the podcast that never dies, or what, what is it? The podcast that wouldn't die? The podcast that wouldn't yeah, die. Yeah, the podcast yes. that wouldn't die. They're always awesome, too. Check them all out. I believe that's it for us, right? Yeah, just make sure to like and subscribe. Talk nerdy to me. Stay nerdy, planet Earth. Keep it nerdy, y'all.